good day folks this is great judy at green pastures farm today we just moved the cows onto a new farm this is our lifetime lease farm and we've already grazed this that was about 50 days ago and uh there's some pretty good grass out here i mean it's not real tall but it's green and the cows are just really going after it so our plan worked we, we decided to uh keep them over here on that farm and feed hay until we got some sun and we got 52 degrees today it took this took 90 percent of the snow off and we're back grazing again so it's supposed to be down to like one degrees i think on thursday night uh friday the high is supposed to be five for the day so you know we're going to get some colder temperatures um but the cattle are uh on this strip and i think we've got seven of these that we're going to put in seven strips and so they get a little bit of stockpile and then they get one bale of hay at the top and so we're keeping our hay up there using gravity to uh, move the urine and the manure down the hills and uh these cattle are happy man but look at this they're not really that hungry there's cows standing around not even eating there's one that's not even eating there's good grass in there. green there's a lead cow 160. um this is our water system we set up i told you i'd show you how we do our siphon so you can see water coming out over there see it right in that fence rope so let's just go over what we got here um this is an old pad that thing there's uh worthless uh i don't like those they just don't put out enough water for a big herd i mean i say they're worthless they're not if you had you know 20 30 cows those frost-free water tanks are great. But for a herd like this in the wintertime, there's 330, 338 head in here. 200 and... I think there's 225, 230 animal units. That's 1,000 pound units. 230 of them. Anyway, uh, this is a 50-gallon tank. And with it full, it probably holds around 40 to 45. And it's got a Job Mega Flow on it, right there, that yellow float. Down there, it's full flow, so the cows drink, it comes out. Uh, you might be wondering what these rubber pads are. Uh, those rubber pads are actually out of a uh, earth moving tire. And uh, I'm gonna move them out a little bit. They've got them too close on that other side over there, but there's actually a little bit of rock and geotextile right here. Years ago, back in the, uh, early 2000 we actually had a, uh, a drinking pad right here there's a big 400 gallon water tank right there that's set here and we took that out and started moving the water around so we don't have a muck but we we needed a place that i mean this is soft out here and i knew they were going to destroy it and so we pulled the siphon right here's my siphon that yellow hose is the siphon and uh i'm not gonna pull it out because i don't want to lose my siphon see we got a <laughs> we got a weight on it that's a clevis folks if you don't put that weight on there those cows will uh take their uh, tongue in fact i'm gonna put that down like that they'll take their tongue and they'll work that hose out of there and you won't have a siphon anymore the only thing that makes this work is the siphon. It's constantly flowing out over there. I'm going to walk you over and show it to you. So this is a Flexzilla. I do like the Flexzilla hose, that yellow one. Very, very flexible. Um, I love them for winter. I love them for summer. They just, they seem to work. They're not cheap. I think that hose, it's a, it's a 50 footer. It might be a hundred, no, it's 75 feet. It's 75 feet. And um, it's it's a pretty tough hose. I think I gave forty five bucks for it. But anyway, that's my siphon, the yellow one. And I got another Flexzilla hose hooked on, coming around. I'm gonna follow it back around, and it's hooked onto that hydrant. So what we did is we kept the cattle out of this whole area with just a temporary fence. There's uh, about 5,400 volts on that wire. I don't want the cattle up here messing around my hydrant, mucking this up. And see all this hose laying out here. 
that, that's kind of tight. I'm gonna pull that back just a little bit. There we go. Um, all this hose lying around, you don't want cattle walking on it. It gets cold tonight and that hose gets a little bit more brutal. You may come out in the morning and you'll find a hose with a great big old burst in it where they stepped on it when it was, you know, cold and the hose is more brittle. So what I did is I ran the hose over here. So our overflow is going down this hill away from the cows. Folks, you can't put water out like that in your paddock and expect cows not to muck it up. But see, we're done with that side of the farm. We're not gonna be back over there till April. I've measured this flow. So that flow is about the diameter. Well, it's, it's a diameter of probably a pencil. It's coming out of there pretty good. But I've measured the flow and uh, that right there uh, in 12 hours is equal to 50 gallons. Okay, that's nothing. That's no water at all. You're not, you can look at that and well, Greg, you're wasting a lot of water. No, we're not. 50 gallons is nothing. See, there's, that's not pressure, that's just a gravity. And so we had to raise that hose up onto that steel post. If you laid that on the ground, now you're talking overnight, probably close to a thousand gallons. Cause I mean, it's pouring out of there. But it's only about a quarter flow right there. And uh, it can get cold tonight. It's, I think it's supposed to get down to 24. And we can come out here in the morning. And see, the reason you need that flow, folks, is when the cattle go up here and uh, lay down and ruminate tonight, and they just kind of all lay down when it gets dark, there's nothing drinking out of that, out of that tank. And so what happens is, if you don't have a, a, a siphon on it, you, you'll come here in the morning and that, that hydrant, that hose, and the pipe going into that tank, everything will be froze. Froze solid. You talk about a deal. You can fix it, but it's a deal. What you gotta do is take that hose off, go get you a bucket of hot water, and pour that hot water right there on that stem. Then you can take the hose off, which is solid froze, okay? you gotta pour hot water down this. Don't try and shut that off if it's froze. You'll break it. You'll break that stem off there and now you really got a problem. And you think, but Greg, a five gallon, you, it'll never thaw that out. Yes, it will. Hot water and steel are married. I mean, this really soaks up hot water nice. And hot water will thaw stuff quicker you can never imagine, especially steel pipe. And then you can go over there and pour uh, your last little bit of hot water right there on that fitting, right there. Take that off, and then you can dump your, you know, get the ice off the top of your tank and dump your water out and take it back to the house. But it's all because you didn't put a siphon on it. As long as there's water coming out over there, it's like something sitting here drinking. And so if something drinking out of that tank all night long, there's water flowing through that yellow hose. It can't freeze. Running water can't freeze. So that's why it works and it works very well. These cows, they got ample grass. They hit, look at them. That's some pretty good hay up there Connor's rolling out. They all went up there. So they're gonna chow down on a little bit of hay. They'll, they'll fill up on that and they'll come down, they'll pick around on this grass. And when we get up here in the morning, it'll be about eight o'clock, 8.30. They'll have something to kind of nibble on and we'll give them another break of grass. Uh, this particular paddock is about uh, 800 feet long and it's about 150 feet wide. So, yeah. It's amazing that bale and roar, isn't it? I mean, look at that thing, it's flat getting with it. It's the way to do it, folks. If we had a tractor out here tonight with one of those hydraulic three point hitch unrolled, we'd be tearing the heck out of our pasture. We'd have ruts in the field that would be there for two years. That little thing just goes and goes. It's like the Ever Ready Bunny, except for it, it's not heavy. 
See, he got flotation tires on everything. I mean, <laughs> he caught her. He's just going back and forth, back and forth. And they, they're using pet the cat method, so they, they got the bail on there backwards, intentionally, so you can get a longer windrow out of it. Spread your hay out. And Isaac and uh, David, they're not having to spread any hay because that bale is just coming off a little bit at a time. Think of the seed and the fertility that Connor's putting out up there. Yeah, wonderful tool. 338 head being fed with a four wheeler in mucky conditions and we're not tearing up our farm. So if you got ruts and you're trying to feed hay with your tractor and get tired of all those ruts, there's your tool right there. Yep. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, I feel really good about our water system tonight. Got water coming out. I don't care if nothing drinks from dark until daylight, which there will be. There'll be something drinking. Um, you don't have to worry about this water system. Love it. Love it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Everyone uh, new to the channel, hit that subscribe button on the way out. And one last plug, uh, our grazing schools are filling up quickly. Uh, I'd say we're going to be probably sold out on the beginner's class within the next four to five days. And the advanced class is right behind, pretty close. It's getting a lot of folks signed up as well. So go to our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. Click on that green bar on the front. And uh, our PayPal buttons are not working correctly. You can still sign up, but it's going to tell you, it's, you know, just send us an email if you have any trouble. We'll, we'll, we'll work through it. Folks, have a good one, and we'll see you down the road next time.